Hi, I'm Gary Katz from the Katz Roadshow, and this is Carpentry Magazine. I'm about to do a video presentation of one of the presentations we do at the Katz Roadshow, laying out stair stringers. But before I shoot that video, I want to talk about lasers. Laser is the first tool I reach for when I'm laying out stair stringers because you can't measure the drop directly from the deck straight down. You've got to measure the drop for the stringer from the top of the deck all the way out to where the stringers are going to land. And in order to do that, you can hold a level up here and hold it up in the air and pull a tape down to the floor and try and hold that level perfectly level, which is kind of a drag, it's not precise. And what if the stairs are running out 10 feet? A laser is much smarter, it's much more precise. With a laser, all you do is turn it on, take a tape measure and measure from the drop from your landing point up to the laser line, right there. And then subtract from that measurement the distance from the deck up to the laser line, maybe it's an inch or two inches, and that'll give you the precise drop of the stair. But before I get into that, and that's the next video, let's talk about lasers and what laser is right for you. I've got three lasers here. Which is the best for you? Well, that all depends on what kind of work you do and how accurate your work has to be. If you're working in tract homes or apartment buildings like I did for years, you don't need dead-on precision. But if you're working in mid-level homes, accuracy and precision might be pretty important. And at the same time, if you're working in high-end homes, then you need to be dead-on. And it's not just about the type of projects you work on, it's the distance that you work over too. So let's look at these lasers. This is a green line laser, and it's accurate to 3 eighths of an inch over 50 feet. At least that's what you'll read in the literature online. But keep in mind, the industry standard for gauging personal lasers like this, like line lasers, is a distance of 30 feet. And the accuracy rating for this laser then is 3 eighths of an inch over 30 feet in the worst case scenario. Manufacturers want to be certain that they're telling you something that you can totally rely on. So before we go any farther, let's talk about what these maximum deviation ratings really mean. Most laser companies actually tell you that their lasers are accurate to an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch over 30 feet. That's the maximum deviation. Might be a sixteenth of an inch up or a sixteenth of an inch down. As Stabilis said years ago with this LAX, when this LAX 300 first came out and they said it was three eighths of an inch over 50 feet, that's the maximum deviation. That's like three sixteenths up, three sixteenths down. But really, these companies ship these tools out and they ought to be accurate on the best day depending upon temperature and how long you've had the laser and how long it's been running, it's been you know, kind of driving around in your truck with you, the lasers should be accurate a lot more than that. In fact, Stabila says that their lasers are accurate to zero most of the time when they're brand new and in the exact conditions that they're designed for. And it really does depend on how hot it is or how cold it is. Now that we've got the maximum deviation and the whole ratings business kind of understood a little better, what kind of work are you doing and what distance are you working over? I learned this from Mike Frazier. He runs Stabila USA. It's amazing how much stuff you can learn from manufacturers. I mean, for years, that was the last place we turned to for advice because we didn't trust them because they thought they were just trying to sell us stuff. But the truth is, manufacturers know more about their tools and their products than anyone else. And most of them are so helpful. They're eager to answer questions. If you have a question about a product, reach out to a manufacturer or a manufacturer's rep. This is what I learned from Mike Frazier. We all work in different areas of a home. Some of us specialize in closets or kitchens, in which case we're not working over very long distances. If you're working in a closet, then you, all you really need is a spirit level, a really nice, like a six foot or an eight foot level, maybe a whole set. But if you're working in a kitchen, now you're working over 30, 40, 50 feet. And depending upon the 
you know, the value of that kitchen, depending upon how high end that home is, you may want a laser that's accurate to a 16th or a 32nd of an inch, or you may be doing production work and an accurate and a laser that's accurate to an eighth of an inch over 30 feet is going to be more than good enough to suit your needs. That's what this is all about. What distance are you working over and what kind of precision does your job demand? If you're working in apartment buildings or, or tracked homes like I used to for years, this laser is going to be just fine. It's going to really fit your jobs. Whereas if you're working in mid-level homes and you need more accuracy, you're going to want something that's a little bit more precise. This laser is accurate to 3 sixteenths of an inch over 50 feet. And if Sabila or some company changes their ratings or something, think of it as 3 sixteenths over 30 feet if you want to. That's the maximum deviation. But what really matters here is this laser is twice as accurate as this one. Are you looking for that? Are you paying attention to that when you purchase your tools? And if you're working in a really high-end home and you need absolute dead-on precision, then you're going to probably want something that's going to fit that need. This one is accurate to 330 seconds over 100 feet, so it's exponentially more accurate than this laser. This difference in accuracy is something I talk about at every single Cats Road Show because the guys who come to the shows, the carpenters and contractors in the audience, they need to know what tool is right for them. What tool will meet the accuracy requirements for their job sites over a long period of time? I mean, these lasers are generally rated to last three to six years. So the investment you're making is going to span a pretty good number of years and a lot of different job sites. You need to know that you can depend on your laser 100% to meet that challenge. So now that you've invested in a highly accurate instrument, how can you know for sure when you go to your next job site that your laser is calibrated accurately and that it's going to shoot a precisely level line? Let me show you how to test it. So I'm going to take this laser and turn it on and set it right out here on the edge of my table, my workbench, so that it's close to the center of the room. Then I'm going to rotate it so that the plumb line is in this right corner and put it right on the corner and I'm kind of getting toward the max distance of the level line. The level line might be 100 degrees or 120. And I'm going to come over here to about the center of the room and I'll put a pencil line, a, a really sharp pencil line, right on that green line. Then I'm going to come back to the laser. I'm going to rotate it again and this time I'm going to put it in the far corner. And then and I just want to get it so it's swung past the center here. I'm going to put my pencil on here again. I'm going to put another line right next to that one. These lines are within a 32nd of an inch of each other. If you look at this really closely, this laser is so accurate over 30 feet that it's almost zero deviation. Over 50 feet, maybe it's off a 16th, at the most an eighth of an inch, which means that laser no problem on a job like apartment buildings or tracked homes or if you're just shooting you need a line over a real short distance you can definitely rely on that laser. Now let's check one of the other ones. Rotating laser is a little bit different to check. This is a line laser so you check it exactly the same way as I did this green line but the rotating laser I'm going to set it out here and turn it on and it's going to give us a line all the way around here and I'm going to walk over to the wall and put a sharp pencil mark right on the line there. And then I'm going to walk over to the opposite side of the room and I'll put another mark right here. And now I'm going to take the laser and I'm going to rotate it. 180 degrees and I'm not going to move it from the position it's on and that way I won't have changed the level position that it's in and I'll come back to this mark and I'll put a second line right above the first one and I'm going to go back over to this mark and do the same thing right here. So this laser line is obliterating our pencil lines. So let me turn this off so we can get a good look at the deviation. Now we can see the difference between these two lines. Maybe a sixteenth of an inch. 
well within the specification made by the manufacturer and really accurate too. Now let's check the other side. With the laser line off, we can really see the difference in elevation between these two marks and it's hardly anything, maybe a 32nd of an inch, well within the tolerance specced by the manufacturer for this laser. So there's one other thing I want to talk about, maybe a couple things. First, this is a green line laser and it's pulsing, but you have to have a special receiver for it. And not every laser manufacturer provides a receiver for their green line lasers. So check with your manufacturer and your model before you purchase one if you want to be able to use a receiver or a detector with your line laser, which is really handy, I kind of feel. If you're working over a long distance and you can't see the line very well, especially if you're outside or in a really bright room, the receiver is extremely handy. It works with all the red line lasers, but some of the green line lasers it may not. I don't completely understand that myself. And the other thing I do understand though, is I want to be sure that the lasers I invest in are really durable. Remember, we want that laser to last from three to six years. Well, here's something you should look for. I like to buy lasers that have a pendulum lock. If it's a pendulum laser, like this little laser here, it'll self-level within five degrees. As long as the surface you're putting on is within five degrees of level, it will self-level. And it's actually best if you put it on a surface that's dead level, because then the laser doesn't have to work as hard. You'll get better accuracy. But I like the pendulum lock so that when you shut it off, it doesn't bang around. That's the laser on. And when I turn it off, it doesn't bang around. That way when it's in your toolbox or in your truck, it's not beating itself to death. The same with this little rotator. That's the only noise you'll hear when it's off, but when it's on, you're going to hear that pendulum running around. Now with a servo motor like this LA90L or its bigger cousin, Boy, you want to make sure this stays in its case and you don't want to leave it in your truck. If you want to rely on the precision of your laser, like this one that's accurate to 330 seconds over 100 feet, and it's a servo motor laser, you can't lock down the servo motors. Make sure that you store this in the case and not in the trailer behind your truck where it's going to get bounced around from the shock system in your trailer. At least keep it in your truck and really, if you want it to last a long time, store it in your shop or your garage and only pull it out on the days that you need it. Now that covers the basics of laser precision and should help you a little bit in choosing the laser that's right for you.